There's a lot of water on the Earth, but less than 1% is fresh water that's available to drink. There are places that could actually run out of water, and California is one of them. When I would drive through the Central Valley, I'd see all these signs about water. For California's valley, a good supply of water all through the year has changed a worthless desert into productive farmland. Back in the 30s, the government turned on the tap for the farmers. The Central Valley produces about 25% of the food consumed in the United States. We now have about 7 million irrigated acres. We're stretching a limited resource to its limits. Farmers have had their surface water cut way, way back. And so the logical thing to do then is to pump groundwater. All around the United States, the water table in the aquifers is going down. And it took, in many places, thousands of years for this water to accumulate in the aquifers. And yet, we're going through it in mere decades. For many years, I've been working with a satellite called GRACE. If you are looking at an area that's had a big mass change, say, from groundwater depletion, GRACE can see that because the mass change is so big that it's actually sensed by the satellites. Uh, we can see significant depletion in California. We've been keeping a close eye on the Central Valley. If we go back to 1998, the aquifer has lost about one and a half times the volume of Lake Mead. That's a huge amount of water. How much is left in the aquifer? Let me see how I can sugarcoat this. <laughs> you know, I ran some back of the envelope numbers, looking at how long it would take at those pumping rates for the aquifer to be depleted. And I got a number between, say, 60 and 100 years. So at the low end, 60 years, that's frightening. I look at where we are right now. I think we're really poised for a big drop, and we need to, need to pay attention. Colorado River Basin uh, is really in no better shape than California is. We're in the midst of probably the worst drought ever, and all of our water storage is at record lows. When we have wetter years, the groundwater recovers a little bit, but when we have a drought, we extract so much more groundwater that the net impact is this huge decline. It's our most precious water asset right now. And ironically, you really don't manage it. Imagine having a checking account and not keeping track of the withdrawals and, and not keeping track of the, of the balance. That would be crazy. You would never do that with your, with your personal account. Yet that's exactly what we do with groundwater. Okay. When you start making these plots of the groundwater storage changes in all these aquifers, yeah. you know, it's pretty dire. It's really striking. Those trends are really quite stable, yeah. right? One of the things that has become very clear is that that pattern of intensive groundwater use doesn't even have to do with uh, the drought period. So we could look at these trends that we see on these maps are actually fixed. They're not moving around like a, a wet year or a dry year. They're fixed. So that's, of course, a very big concern. And then this paper looks at the correlation between seismicity on the San Andreas Fault and groundwater pumping in the Central Valley. Groundwater depletion is even related to the cycle of earthquakes. The idea is that as you remove the mass load through pumping, right, through groundwater use, you're unlocking the fault. So that's a big fear is uh, could we unlock the big one? Could we unleash the big one? In a normal year in California, we get about a third of our water supply from groundwater. Right now it's about 70% the groundwater is disappearing, and, and, and no one is paying attention. We have enough water storage for the next year and a half, two years. After that, we are literally praying for rain. <laughs>